something. Listen, boys. We are going to see them and we are going to play at Gosia Cup. Are you ready, boys? Yes, Let's go and do it, boys. My stomach is just moving. <laughs> I hereby declare the Valley Dome 2019 officially open. There are 155 teams for kids under 13. And to win that competition, it's going to be so hard. Hey everyone, wipe your tears. We learn from this and we continue forward. As a coach, I think it's a perfect time to my community, to all the bad things that I did to them when I'm still growing up. Bor och turister samlas runt fotbollsplanen och tittar på när Kusasa stars. This is the chance that you have. You're going to write your own book with this experience. Oh man, yeah. Look, we're gonna have to go back and 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 talk about that um, that special project, okay. Usasa. And um, we will definitely be talking about it much more later. And uh, but hey, it's six o'clock Monday evening. The real dialogue, um, all the way from the Eastern Cape, East London. And um, as I normally do, let me share with you why we have these dialogues. Of course, the real dialogue is part or is an initiative of the real village. And the dual purpose of these um, um, conversations, number one, is, is to capture the continent's change makers and celebrate the continent's change makers. We celebrate the people that make not just the world, and that is important, but specifically Africa a better place. And, uh, and the reason we celebrate them, number one, is because um, of their contribution um, in making Africa a better place. Number two, we celebrate them also because of how we feel about ourselves as Africans when we look at them and the work that they do. And thirdly, we celebrate these continent change makers because of what they make us think is possible about Africa. And, um, and so this month of November, I have been sharing with all of us that, um, that it's my last month on the third floor. Very soon, next month in December, I'm going to be turning 40. I know it's too much. Yeah, so, but I'm going to be, so I've decided as a way of saying bye bye to, 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 to the 30s, let me celebrate young change makers, excellent change makers. So, 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 so we've had, I mean, last week we had, um, Vianne Mshomi, Dr. Vianne Mshomi. Before then, we had Dr. Willi Chinyamurindi. And today we have got the incredible, the incredible change maker that is very close to my heart, Shane Fermuten. And here he is. He's just joined me. Shane, good evening to you, my friend. How are you doing? Hey, Stephen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. And hey, hey, thanks, man. I, I mean, I know how busy you are and uh, and uh, that you've decided. Actually, here's the funny thing. Uh, I, I, I called your dad. I was like, hey, is Shane still using the same number? He says, yes, yes, he is. Because I want to invite. He says, no, go ahead. If he's giving you problems, tell him that I have, have you've spoken to me already. I said, no, no, no I don't think he's going to do that. So, so, but hey, thank you, man, for joining us. And, um, and uh, we're going to be talking about you your impact and uh, what drives you, the work that you have done. But before we get to do anything, let me just say this. 
I celebrate you. I think you're an incredible young person. You are what it is possible about our world, about Africa, about South Africa. And But hey, we're going to be talking about that much more later. How was your day? How was your day? Tell me. I mean, you 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 did a couple of things, a couple of errands today. How did it go out? I mean, how did it go? How was your day today? No, it's amazing. I mean, I, I've, I'm actually just back in South Africa for this week. So sure. anything that I have um, moved to the UK recently, so anything that I can do at what's the time, six o'clock and there's still sun, sure. Uh, sure. is amazing. Um, you know, if we were doing this last week, I would have not had so much light on my face. Uh, mm. you know, so it's just amazing to be having so much sun. Um, sure. But yeah, I had a, had a fantastic day. Had some meetings, went, uh, visited some of our, 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 um, our friends who, who live on the streets by where we used to stay in Seapoint, uh, went for lunch, so great day. I was hoping, I was hoping that you're going to mention that and... Um, because it just speaks of, of, of how an incredible human being that you are. But hey, we will touch all of those things. Welcome on The Real Dialogue. Once again, we are really, really honored to have you here, my friend. And uh, in fact, I was, I was reflecting, as I normally do, when I'm about to, 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 to host a guest, as to how did I get to meet them? And I think I wrote about it on social media. The first time that I saw you, I was a speaker at the inaugural um, justice conference there yeah. in Cape Town. And, and the first time, I mean, I think you were, uh, you know, helping me with my mic and, uh, and as I was about to speak. And, and of course, throughout the conference, we would say a couple of words, hey, 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 how are you? And, and, and then of course, the following year, I was once again invited um, um, by uh, Craig. Um, and then after my session, a tall guy comes to me. I said, hey, enjoy that. How are you? And, and, and when are you going back home? And then I tell him, I said, hey, before you go back home, please do come and say hi. I mean, come for a visit at my house. And, um, and I'm happy to tell you that I did go. And um, your home is now one of my favorite places in Cape Town. In fact, I, I can even say, hey, Graham, I'm outside. Where's the key? And, um, and, and that's the kind of patterns that you're having. Okay. We will touch on, on your parents, Graham and Di, and uh, later on. But talk to me about your childhood. Where were you born? How was it like? What school did you go to? What kind of a pupil, a student were you? And um, sure. I just want to grab my, um, just grab my tea over here. It's on the ground. So. Oh, sure, sure. I've got my water as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, before I touch on the childhood, I was going to say, yeah, I remember the, that um, meeting up at the Justice Conference was amazing. Um, sure. and I'm actually just doing a project now um, with uh, Sipokazi, I also met at the Justice Conference, and yeah, uh, yeah. and Val's been involved with that from the Justice Conference, and I'm yeah. we continue to, to do other projects with the trailer you just showed, and that's in partnership with a warehouse. So yeah. it seems it's amazing that, you know, I think you always hold conferences, and you go, well, what's the point? Like, why mm -hmm. spend a grand or two million or whatever it is? On just hosting a conference and now it's been amazing to start seeing you know two three years down the line from the first justice sure. conference sure i didn't do more than that no three years down the line yeah from the first justice well, well, conference. 20, 2017 the first one i think yeah it was 2017 yeah. the first one yeah okay and now these kind of relationships are starting to pay off and things are starting to happen so so it's really I mean, it's exciting and, sure yeah no there's, sure. there's amazing work that, that we did there perhaps we should give kudos um at, at this time to to the warehouse team and yes. uh, you know the stewardship of Craig, of course. Yeah, but thanks about yeah. that, Shay. No, definitely. Yeah, the most uh, I have so much time for, for the warehouse team and for Craig. Anyway, they just do incredible work. They um, do. Hey. About it. No, I, I love any time I get opportunity to work with them, I'll do it. Incredible guys, absolutely incredible. Now, now let's go to your channel. This is not yeah. about the warehouse. Not about Craig. This yeah. is about Shane. Um, yes, my childhood. So I. Um, Born and born and bred in in Cape Town, uh, got obviously two parents and an older brother. Um, yeah, um, what else can I say? I went to um, grew up in a in a uh, my, my parents are YWAMers, so grew up within the, the YWAM sort of structures, um, I, and yeah, we kind of grew up in a, in a sort in the southern suburbs of Cape Town. I went to school here. Um, before I went to school, I remember my parents were still joining YWAM, so we went over to um, to Hawaii, uh, where they studied at, at the main kind of Youth with a Mission campus there. 
Um, and unfortunately, you wish there was like moments in your life, you're like, I wish I would have more clear memories of what happened back then. Sure, because sure. You know, now I think I would you know, give an arm and a leg to spend a year in Hawaii. And now you know, my only memories of it are through photographs um, sure. and stories. Um, so, so yeah, I did that. And I think that was kind of a thread growing up throughout my childhood was just being able to, to, to travel, to see the world. Um, and in fact, so, so much so that by the time I finished school, I had been to close to 20 countries, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, growing up in a family where, where that where sort of that was important. Um, sure. I remember growing up and always having different people. I like you shared the story of my dad at the Justice Conference just saying, oh, where are you going yeah. Come stay at my yeah. house. Um, like for most people, I'm like, that's that's strange. What a, what an odd man. Um, sure. but, but for for me, like that's just, that was just normal. Like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's not even strange. Sure. Um, it's just kind of what he does. So growing up, we always had constantly new people around um, our dining room table. Um, and I'd always just want to sit there and listen to these incredible people and listen to the stories. And um, and then even when I'd go to my room, my room was like next door to the to a dining room. I just like lie awake and listen and all sure. time, you know. Um, sure. So I think that was kind of an amazing thing for me growing up was having all these incredible people around and just learning from their stories, getting to travel and uh, just kind of having a, meant that I had a very different worldview to, um, hmm peers my age and 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 I think to a, a lot of people in my you know kind of societal class race language um, so it was fun but also on the other fl flip side meant that you know by the time I was going into high school I was like I hate school like I just want I want to be finished I felt like real life was going to begin once I'd finished school because sure. uh, I'd experienced already so much mm -hmm. uh, and I was just like, man, when I finish school, I can do so much. And this is just getting in the way. Uh, I did finish. Uh, I wasn't, I wouldn't say the teachers all loved me. Um, sure. I, was the, I was the kid in the back starting trouble. Um, but all the teachers always loved me because they always said, look, he's so naughty, but he's also polite. So like, mm. if you can't, oh, so, so, so sorry. Yeah. And sure. I, I talk, I talk my way out of trouble. But I think that's kind of that my childhood then, yeah. And finish school in, in Cape Town too, so. It's kind of yeah. this is yeah. this is my home. So 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 um, you you have got both um, your dad and, and and your mom's traits and um, but I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say and um, but 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 what what do you think you have taken the most from your mom? And and what do you think you've taken the most from from your dad? I'm asking that because I happen to know the both of them, um, and and I'm so privileged to call them friends. And uh, yeah. so I can ask that question because I've I know them. And uh, but what do you think you've taken the most from 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 both of them? <clears throat> sure. So where would you put me on the spot? Uh, I know. <laughs> this was not but, part of the questions. Eh? <laughs> no, I think it, I mean I would say it's it's probably pretty easy. Um, this side of my face is my mom, and then that side's my dad, and then. Ah. But <laughs> no, um, I think definitely um, from a mom's side would be the kind of this creative, sure. business, um, this uh, kind of pursuit to tell a good story excellently. Sure. I, de yeah, I definitely got that from my mom. And then obviously everything that comes along with that, all the skills and whatever. But at the heart yeah. of it is this idea of, you know, um, stories matter. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, all, all the, the practical skills that come along with that. Um, and then I think um, from, from my dad is kind of more the like kind of I don't know if it, I don't know if you say hard skills or soft skills, but like the, the sort of people skills um, and kind of the you know the, the sort of business more business side because I've got a fa fascination with both worlds um, in terms of wanting to 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 tell stories and make movies, but then. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, also having this major fascination with business and have gone off at times and gone, cool, I'm going to kind of associate it with, with the film industry, but I'm going to go off and start a business which distributes films or does something yeah. because that's another big fascination of mine. So yeah. I think currently where, where I'm at at the moment is very lucky in that those two have kind of come together, allowing me to make content um, which matters and then also being able to bring in sort of business skills uh, in order to make that happen. Luckily, um, my wife, Bianca, her business skills are a lot better and stronger 
than mine and a financial skill. So, sure. so she can take some of that load off my sh shoulders. Sure, sure, sure. And, and of course, we, we're going to be touching. I mean, the reason that you guys are in the UK is primarily to, to support her on her academic endeavors. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah, so 100% why we're there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, she's she's studying an MBA at Said Business School in Oxford. Um, so literally probably chose one of the most expensive places in the world. Sure. <laughs> Just to go and study. But it's incredible. We've been there uh, two months now, yeah, two yeah. and a half months, and sure. it's just amazing. So yeah, she's, uh, and she's enjoying it as well. I hope she's watching us. Hi, Bianca. Yeah, hi, B, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, no, I think she's loving it. So, and yeah. I'm loving it. It's, just, it's such a, um, you know, kind of inspirational place to be. Obviously, sure. in the UK, and Empire has many sure. issues. Um, mm. But just on the surface, walking around, it's everything's old, and it, you know the, the the college. Everything is just inspiring. So it's a great place to go to let the creative juices flow and be away from home. Um, so sure. still, you know, we haven't been in that long. So getting dark early and kind of raining, still kind mm -hmm. of romantic. Mm -hmm. I'm sure about sure. It, like <laughs> sure. we hate the yeah. So, so, but but talk to me, Shane. When when Bianca is in uh, uh, is in classes, what are you doing? Roaming around the streets? Yeah, I was just roaming around, stealing people's bicycles, selling it on the side. Yeah, um, sure. No, yeah. So, uh, we, we have a company called Optical Films, and so we're doing yeah. we do other work through that. So this yeah. kind of first um, two months, we were finishing off another project, which I'm sure, sure. we'll speak about later, but it's called uh, yeah. Hashtag we are, we are Dying Here. Mm. And um, we filmed that six days, five days before we got an airplane to fly to the UK. Sure. Um, so from that side of being editing, working with the editors, working with the sound guys to make sure that we could get the project finished in time. And sure. this week we just finished it basically. So sure. that's what sure. I've been doing the film for a little while. Yeah. And then yeah. um, got a couple, one one project lined up before the end of the year and then potentially coming back to South Africa and sure. start next year for another project. Mm. Uh, but I can also work that side. So and we just, um, but, you know, a lot of work dried up because of COVID. So the industry's, yeah everywhere so sure yeah i'm just playing it by ear at, at, for the time being yeah yeah and and then of course they've just gone back to 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 lockdown as well in the uk and yeah and Definitely. how is that affecting you guys uh, so i mean like i i could i decided to come because um we had to go you have to go into lockdown in the uk they don't do testing like south africa so it's oh, just mandatory yeah. to be quarantined yeah. So I was like, oh, I don't want to come to South Africa and have to quarantine there. But mm. when lockdown is basically like, well, I have to do it anyways. So sure. let me go to South Africa um, and have some meetings, finish this film, and then go back. And by the time I finish my two weeks quarantine, pretty much the next day, they'll come out of lockdown. So sure. I only experienced a couple of days of, but for South African, if you look at the UK lockdown, it's like lockdown light. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, now, now, man, tell me now. Did you always know that you're gonna go this route, um, you know, this side of, of of creativity, filmmaking, directing, and um, and if it was not this route, what do you think it would have been? Yeah, someone had asked me this question the other day. What did you want to be growing up? And so I sure. had to think about it long and hard, and I, I realized there's probably only one other thing I wanted. I could now, if I think back, remember wanting to be, and I don't even know how long that lasted, um, and that was an architect. Um, but very shortly I realized my drawings are horrible that, I mean, I can't, I can barely draw a stick. And, um, I failed maths at the end of school. I failed standard. We're still doing standard in higher grade. Oh, I remember. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, was, uh, I, I failed standard grade maths dismally, like 18% dismally. Um, sure. so I think luckily way back in the day, it was like, that's not for you. I'm glad I didn't mm. try to mm. be a time of pain. But um, I think probably if I think back about that, what attracted me to that was this idea of much like a filmmaker and architect is looking at an op open piece of land and saying, what could be here? What can this mm -hmm. be? Mm -hmm. um, and they basically create something out of nothing. And sure. I think that's probably um, now, you know, I'd say I'm a filmmaker or whatever, but I think at the core of it is there's something in me that's, um, you know, mesmerized and intrigued by creation. And, and looking at something and going, well, there's nothing here, but I see this. Mm. Um, mm. And then the challenges that come with that, 
whereas you know an architect would use his pencil and and, and you know draw it on sketch paper you know I would, I would use my words or pictures or references or you know and and ultimately you want to end up with a finished film or product um and that whole journey is just always fascinated me sure. so i it was that um maybe now seven or eight i remember playing in someone's garden and saying i want to be an architect and then mm. I remember much more past that and then i think just growing up the rest of the time i was always i just wanted to be in um film um, sure. i don't know if you could say i chose it or, or it kind of chose me because um my as, as you're speaking about like my parents being part of ywam they run an organization called media village which does the training side and then they also do production and so yeah. growing up i'd go and shoots all the time um you know i would hold hold sandbags or lights mm. or probably mm. in the of free labor which is really clever i'm like ah should get yeah. kids and they work for free um but no it was it was just amazing that that allowed me to see the world and uh, allow me to experience what it's like to to be around production, and it's the only thing sure. I ever wanted to do since then. Sure, sure, sure. Also, and, and, and Harry, sure, sure. And 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 you've done that. I mean, I, I was looking at at the kind of movies. Um, um, is it? Am I right if I, if 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 I say another side of life would be your first one? Um, uh, your first work, I don't know. I was trying to think how old were you then, and um, and looking in 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 your fil filmography. I mean, Keat and Glory, and uh, Ocean Quest Express, uh, uh, Bypass. Uh, we're going to speak about Bypass and the impact that it had as well, and um, around you know the, the organ movement, Freedom Road, Another Side of Life. I've mentioned that Adrift, and um, obviously these 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 are all very close to you and are your babies. Are there ones that 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 stand out for you and um, and that are, are closer than the rest to your heart? Yeah, I, I think I was chatting to someone the other day and they asked, what are your favorite countries to travel to? And as I started listing them, then I was like, oh, those are the more recent countries I've been to. Ah, my mom, mom was like, but what about this experience? I was like, oh, that was very cool. What about this? Like, oh, yes, but they were further back. So the memories are just more fresh of, of sure. the later countries you sure. travel to. I think I'd say the same thing with, um, you know, filmmaking. I suppose probably um, uh, maybe Freedom Road, which is definitely, it's not the most recent one, but kind of sure. going back to it was one of the first shorts that sure. I did actually did pretty well and was working with, you know, uh, you know, le legitimate actors, and so I think that whole experience, remembering the sure. nerves, um, and then bypass was this, um, just the stress of of stepping on set for the first time, mm. of having, mm. film, of mm. uh, you know, just this absolute idea of I'm an absolute imposter, um, you know, people are going to find me out, and then having to deal with that kind of imposter syndrome, um, and and hoping it doesn't come out in a negative sense. Sure. Um, and then, I mean, we'll talk about bypass, I suppose, just now, but so much lessons throughout bypass. Um, and then leading up, building on, on from bypass, I suppose, um, the trailer you showed at the beginning, Kusasa, in terms of yeah. a documentary, I think that's kind of had the most, uh, been closest to my heart. Um, and and also it's most recent, it's just been doing well in a bunch of festivals and, sure. uh, and the impact that's been able to have. So it kind of just wasn't a project we were just able to walk away from. So we've been yeah. able to use to get um, uh, under under lockdown, we got ten thousand masks. We we started a Kickstarter campaign, raised money for ten thousand masks for the whole mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. uh, we managed for six months to to feed thirty six families every month. That's uh, awesome. And we're putting some of the we're starting a fund to put some of the kids through school from the team. So that's kind of been an ongoing investment, um, which has been exciting. And then lastly is We Are Dying Here, which is the film that I came back to South Africa, which you just sure. finished. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, on the screen behind me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. One, one, you know, kind of subtle. Sure. Um, mm. but, uh, for me, in terms of a, a creative process, that was kind of, I think, the most fulfilling uh, to date. Like being able to to go, like, I, I pulled this from this sure. project, and I pulled this from Bypass, and I took this um, from, you know, Kusasa, and I can almost name what the things are that I took from sure. the project. Sure. Um, and having a vision often you have a vision and then budget constraints or you can't get the right person or it just can't happen for many reasons. Mm. And this is one of those projects where someone asked me, are you happy? And I was like, 
I'm extremely happy. What I saw is kind of what I see on the screen at the end, which is very rare. Um, so, yeah, but I could talk about my babies for a long time. So. <laughs> understandably, understandably so. And I did mention to you, I did mention to you um, um, uh, how Kusasa really impacted me, how, how it really resonated with me. Being born in, in Kiwan and growing up in, in Kiwan Soweto in Port Elizabeth, a Sheik uh, community, um, there was just something about Kusasa that just resonated with me. And uh, I saw myself in those boys. And, um, and yeah, it's an, an incredible work. And look, have, did you ever philosophically sit down and say, I'm not just going to make films, but I'm going to make films that change the world? I make films that 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 um, amplify social justice. I'm gonna make films that that encourage uh, love, equality, and, and 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 justice. Was that did it just find you, or was that a deliberate decision on your part? Because that seems to be the thread um, in almost all your your products. I'll say uh, uh, yes. I definitely it was intentional. Um, and then, yes, also, it's both. It also found me. I think as I started okay. doing work and realizing that this is what I'm passionate about, and, and the stories that just came up kind of all seem to have that. Um, mm. and, and for a while, I was like, no, that's not what I want to do because it's difficult to frame the idea of wanting to do media and and justice because sure. often we tell people, oh, I'm a filmmaker. I do kind of um, impact films. Uh, is kind of what 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 how we we term it. Yeah. People yeah. think, oh yeah, that's cute. Like you do those videos for, for the mm. UN, you know, uh. kid cameras, and they go and film. And I'm not bashing those things because sure. they're great transfer of skills. But the end product is like, oh, this is not. Mm. Mm. So trying to having to find a way is how do we give the right messaging across that we make we we tell like we make good stories well told. Sure. Um, and that's kind of what, what we want to do. So our, our company, yeah. Optical Films, that's kind of its heart. Is like at the heart is everything has there's a film and then there's an impact associated with that. Yeah. Uh, and so and so as both as the company and then as in, individuals as filmmakers having worked on different projects, going where's the where's the impact attached? Sure. And then sure. sometimes we do jobs because you know they they pay well. And you're like okay, sure. cool. Uh, and you pay well and, and allow me to do this. Ah, so, yeah. so yes, I think it's it's definitely it's kind of the model that that we look at would be um, participant media in the states. Who did they did the inconvenient truth and they've done dark oh, wars. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so they've won I think something like sixteen Oscars and yeah. all the Hollywood kind of A listers want to work with them. But everything is impact driven. So we make a good movie that people want to watch that has stars, it's well told, and then what is the spin-off in terms of how do we have impact? Sure, and what is sure. our sure. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, movie making with an agenda. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully a, 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 like sort of a, a positive, <laughs> you yeah. know. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Agenda I mean, is a change. Yeah. Definitely, and, and, and speaking about uh, about impact, um, Bypass had an extremely positive um, impact on donor uh, uh, organ donation. Um, yeah. Apparently, you know, raised it by forty percent. Talk to me about that. How how is that? How's, yeah. So, uh, um, what happened was we we made this film, um, and it is on organ organ trafficking, basically. Yeah. And when you kind of look at all the forms of uh, human trafficking, they're all varied and vast and complicated. Um, very much dumbing it down now. We kind of looked at it and thought, okay, well, organ trafficking is one of the easier to solve because sure. people go to the black market to get illegal organs when there's not enough legal donors, right? So if you have a legal organ, then you only need to turn to the black market. Mm -hmm. um, and in South Africa, depending on where you look or who you talk to, it could range from anything less than 3% to anything less than 1% of our population are organ donors. Um, and so we we realized like we can use this film to drive the awareness about people becoming organ donors. Although that's not what the film's about. The film is a thriller. Yeah. You're on the edge of your seat. They are great tie-ins with that messaging. 
And so we created a website. Uh, we, we did a kind of two-pronged uh, approach to the marketing campaign. Uh, we created a website, and the website was called the New Day Clinic. And the New Day Clinic is a clinic that um, the, the characters go to in the film to, to get this illegal operation done. And we set up this website for this illegal clinic, and it was kind of supposed to be a bit inflammatory. So the first thing that happened when you like you came onto the website, there's a write-up and said, like, why should you suffer in poor health when the poor can be used to suffer for you? Mm. Um, and people were shocked, so mad. And we're like, mm. yes, I'm glad you're getting mad at that, but that's the sure. reality. Sure. Some yeah. Money. That's how it is. They're not the ones selling their organs. Mm. Uh, you know, they're not the ones being exploited. So, mm. so we basically set up this website, set up a price list, and started handing out some flyers around around Cape Town. I think we handed out about a thousand flyers over four or five days, and it exploded. Um, sure. But four days later, every province in South Africa had seen it. Um, every state in America had viewed it. Had like fifty thousand hits, mm. uh, and then all of a sudden, it was um, you know there's a newspaper like headlines on the side of the road. It was oh. you know illegal organs for sale on the streets of Cape Town. Um, so it kind of got quite big. We had to get a lawyer and say like, is this illegal? Because uh, mm. my dad said before mm. you should speak to a lawyer. And I'm like, no. <laughs> When that happened, I was like, why would you speak to a lawyer? Um, so the lawyer was like, that's not illegal, but I would probably advise you to not do it. So we're like, yeah, mm. let's continue. Um, mm. But, but and then after that, we did a second campaign, once that died down a little bit, where we took a shipping container, we removed the sides of the container, we put an operating theater in the back, and we drove around the city of Cape Town doing a heart transplant in the back of this truck and mm. around for 10 days, freaked people out. Um, sure. But basically, as a result of these um, these marketing campaigns for the film, we partnered up with the Organ Donor Foundation and said, like, yeah, if it upsets you, good. Mm. Now, are you an organ donor? Sign up to become an organ donor. Sure. And as a result sure. of that campaign, the week after we ran the campaign, we saw, um, or the Organ Donor Foundation saw a 40% spike in people signing up to become organ donors. Mm. That's incredible. That just speaks to 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 the impact that your work does. Anna, you have to ask something. Uh, we have such a low percentage of organ donation. Uh, what could be the reason? And um, I mean, from your experience in that project, yeah. do you want to comment on that? I, I mean, I can I can briefly and by no means an expert, but oh, uh, you know sure. a little bit. But I think when we went about it, there there's lots of kind of what we call low hanging fruit that we can go after first. And I'll tell you what the low-hanging fruit was now, but the other part is that it is, um, you know, uh, kind of tra cultural traditions, religious traditions. So there's many things tied up um, in there. Um, so we were very intentional not to go knocking and say, you know, if you're, um, you know, if, if you, like of the, of the Muslim faith, you should donate, you know, because mm. there's a lot of conversations around there. Or if you don't believe in it, you should do it because it's, we focused on the people who went, oh, organ donation, I can do that. And you go, yes, and you can sign up online, and it takes less than one minute. If you know your name, which I hope most people know, you shouldn't sign up to become an organ donor if you don't know your own name. Sure. But uh, if you know your name and you know your ID book and you can click consent, you're mm. now registered to say, I want to be an organ donor. It's that quick. So for mm. us, that was the low-hanging fruit that we went after and said, let's just remind people and put in people's face, let's sign up to become organ donors. Okay. But there are so many varied reasons in South Africa. Um, and those are, and luckily uh, through the film, it opened up a lot of conversation around, um, you know, kind of r religious practices across all religions and cultural okay. practices. Okay. Um, and things that I'm way out of my depth, depth to speak into, but we're just mm. like, let's start the conversation and then hopefully those conversations can continue. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Valerie, another Great, um, so amazing impact, Shane. Forty percent. Uh, maybe let's just take some time and and and, and reflect. Uh, yeah, she's she's great. Hi, Valerie. And um, and um, Julia says, "Go, Shane." And, um, and 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 beauty. Shane's work is amazing. And uh, and then of course the question there. I must ask, how old is Shane? You can almost understand why that question would be asked. I mean, looking at the at the kind of work that you have done within such, such a short space of time, then it, people would, would be forgiven to think that maybe you are hitting 45? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm uh, 31. Sure. sure. Yeah. 
Well, uh, no, so I, that, I hope I still. I hope I don't look like I'm hitting 45. No, 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 not at all, not at all. But your work, your work says Wait, that you have been here uh, uh, for, for quite a while. And and again, Anele Chafta says, appreciate the diverse guests that you invite. Um, uh, thank you, Anele. Um, these are incredible uh, uh, human beings. Now, tell me, before you started working for yourself. Talk to me about your work journey, and we will transition from that now. And uh, straight from school, where did you work? What did you do? Yeah, so straight straight from school, I went um, to um, actually did a, a y, um, youth of the mission. I joined youth of the mission. Did a course oh. in uh, discipleship training school in in Colorado in the US. Okay. Um, and basically, it was a snowboarders course. So every weekend we'd go snowboarding, and then during the week you'd have classes. So yeah. That was just the, this most amazing time. Then I came back and I studied at Media Village with my parents, um, did yeah. a, a three-month course in film and then three-month course in photography. Sure. So that was my first year finished after school. And then sure. I worked at uh, Media Village for, for two years. Sure. Uh, and then after that, I just did my own companies. And yeah, so that's kind of kind of the journey. But I suppose... One of the biggest things, which is kind of story, which I always point to in terms of, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of kickstarted my career in terms of the work, my body of work was we were um, leading up to the um, to, to the Soccer World Cup, which is 2010. The, um, the, I was working a lot in the human trafficking space and there was this sort of idea, well, not idea, I mean, statistically it's true that there's going to be the spike in people being trafficked for sex and, sure. um, you know, all kinds of different kinds of human trafficking for, for, for the World Cup. And so we yeah. said, we, well, we wanted to do something. So when, while I was in Media Village, one guy came and said, we should do this commercial. And the commercial was for Yogi Sip, you know, the yogurt drink. Yeah. Yeah. So Yogi Sip were running this competition that if you make an advert for them and you win, uh, you win a you win 100,000 rand. So we said, well, that's fantastic. If we win that, we can use that money to make, um, you know, a, a, a kind of a public service announcement, uh, sure. anti-human trafficking, and we can play in the stadiums and on buses and, you know, on television. So we we entered this competition. But what we didn't realize is one of those competitions where you have to get your friends to vote. You know, you write to them every five minutes, please vote, please vote. Sure. Sure. Yeah, the one of those. So then we thought, no, no, our strategy would be the last week we just buy like a thousand yogi sips and then we win a hundred thousand, you know, right off the 10,000 or whatever it was, sure. those yogi sips. You know, we're 90,000 up. That's good. Um, but after the first week, the first the team in the first position had more than 1,000 votes. So we realized we had to do something else. So mm. what we started doing was we got um, the team together. And um, luckily, Media Village at that time had a big, because they used to be in an old hotel, so they had a big kind of walk-in fridge. So on Saturdays, we'd go around to different shops and buy yogi sips. But now, I'm not talking, like, because because the yogurt drinks, they go off. So you can't keep them for long, you know. Sure. Uh, you can pay may have 50, 60, oh, you sure. know, the car may have 40. So the macro would have 200. So you just go to the shop with your trolley or your cart, push it there and just load it up. I mean, these tellers' eyes were like, what's wrong with these people? Mm. Um, and then basically we'd go to churches and say, look, ask for the park for three minutes, say human tra trafficking is an issue. What can you do? Show them the commercial, say, buy Yogi Sip and vote for this commercial. But then what we realized was people weren't voting because it's mm. complicated. So then what we started doing was, cutting open the labels, writing down all the codes, repackaging them. And then on Sundays, just going to churches, doing the same thing and selling the yogi sips. So we ended up doing this for six months, uh, five, 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 six months. And at the end, we sold 11,000 yogi sips. So, so even if I smell a yogi sip now, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll never drink so oh, yogi sips. I understand. Mm. Um, and so, and from that, we, so we won that competition. We won the hundred thousand around that went into this um, public service announcement. Sure. Um, and then from there, that kind of just moved into something else and something else and something else and kind of just, sure. just grew from there. But it all started when, so when people come and ask me now, oh, well, I want to make movies, what do I do? And I used to get annoyed when people go, oh, director's advice, well, just just do it. But mm. I'm like, I, generally, the best advice is just do it. People go, yeah. well, I don't have, and I'm like, I understand that I do, I came from a privileged position in that I was in a production house. My parents owned a production company. But still, what I had in my hand, like, was a yogurt drink, huh. which cost six rand, I think at the time, six rand 50. It sure. went from that to making a commercial with 100,000 rand, which mm -hmm. kind of lost my career. Sure. Sure. So like, what do you have in your hand and how do you use it? 
um, for me, that was launching a career as a, as a filmmaker, but sure. in whatever field you're in, just sure. I think we, we kind of have those basic things. So when guys come to me and say, you know, I, well, I want to make films. I'm like, I made, I started with the Yogi, but I only have a cell phone. Perfect. When I started out, mm. we, I don't think the phones even really had cameras. If they did, their phones were oh. far too expensive. Now even a 500 Rand phone has a great camera where you could film oh. stuff on it. So, sure. so just old stories. Sure, it's amazing. How, but but you've also done work for for you've also worked for Art Labs, right? Yes. Yeah. When was uh, that? So so Art Labs are reconstructed living labs. Yeah. Um, they um, it's an amazing kind of organization. They're based in in Bridgetown on the Cape Flats and do a lot of work with um, digital literacy and training um, in that space. Yeah. Um, and I had I was working actually doing media for um, after doing that PSA. Um, so, I'd gone over to the states and was working with a nonprofit there, doing the the media for them. And I was in San Francisco, and and this um, organization, not for sale, were having an event at Facebook Causes offices hmm. in in, um, in downtown San Francisco. This amazing view of it. Of a kind of San Francisco, and it just so happened someone I knew knew someone, and Marlon was in San Francisco for meetings. And Marlon is the founder of R Labs. Oh, oh, by the way, so I reached out sorry. and said, "Hey, we having this." Yes, I was saying that. By the way, we're going to be ending. We're going to be having Marlon on the Real Dialogue at the end of the month. Um, two weeks really? from now, we're going to be having. Yeah, yeah, Marlon, Marlon Park. Well, yeah. Sure. When he's done, you should surprise ask him about optical films because he's our it's me, Bianca, and Marlon are the shareholders of the company. Oh really? I will do. I will definitely do that. Yeah. Um so someone said, Oh, you should meet um you should meet this guy Marlon. And so I invited him and he came. And I think we went to like a, a like a restaurant afterwards and just chatted till like 11, 12 o'clock. And I remember going home that night and crying and being like, I'm gonna work for that guy one day. Like it was just a like a, 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 a hard um came back. Um and worked for a little bit, did 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 uh, the um, another side of life, and then it kind of just came about an opportunity. I went to him, said, "Hey, we have this idea," and we launched a company um, together, which distributed um, videos to low-end mobile phones. So sure. we're talking like uh, what what were at that stage called um, dumb phones, yes. but basically uh, phones which ran Mixit. I don't know if you remember Mixit. You know, yes, I remember. Them. I remember. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. So we used Mixit as a platform, and we just and we took um, clips, um, kind of almost what TikTok is doing now. So now I'm like, oh man, we're just ahead of our time. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. But we yeah. basically distributed um, films, um, short films, feature films, basically video yeah. content to these guys on low end mobile phones, and a, a, a clip not ex exceeding three megabytes. We yeah. just, and we built this platform on Mixit, and we had five hundred thousand users, um, and then we sold that to to another organizer, another yeah. company. I don't uh, remember. Has since folded because you know who can compete against Netflix? No one. Sure. But but so kind of that's my that that was kind of my journey, and then I worked at the incubator for a year, helping some of their projects um, in their business incubator, uh, and then now I, me and Marlon actually just had had coffee yesterday, and he's our business partner. So sure. he's definitely sure. like kind of one of the solid mentors who's been you know yeah. been there yeah. you know, the last ten years or so. Yeah. Yeah. He's an incredible guy, absolutely incredible guy. And I remember the first time I met him, absolutely incredible guy. And like I said, um, we're going to be having him at the, I think, the week after next, not yeah. the coming, so yeah, the, the last week of, of November. And okay. and look, yeah. in your yeah. work, yeah. our lab, I could, you know, this whole thing could be, I could just talk about our lab. So. Yeah. I know. yeah, look, he's, he's going to have enough time to do that. Uh, uh, we're talking about Shane today. And look, you have... I mean, I was going through your your your, your awards and 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 the recognition and um, the short film Freedom Road was screened alongside uh, uh, Kendrick's work at the City yeah. Gallery in, in Wellington, yes. And then you also won Best Narrative at the Pan African Film Festival in LA. And uh, I mean, you filmed in more than twenty one countries. And of course, uh, the attention that uh, your latest documentary Kosasa is receiving, we could be. And you are also a, a, a Mandela uh, Washington Fellow. And um, also, Melon Guardian, Young 200 South African. Now, these are all special. And of course, there's much more that I would not have uh, mentioned. And uh, no, I think you mentioned it all. 
which yeah. one? Which, all, all of them are special, but which one? I mean, you know, which which one really uh, 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 was special? And uh, uh, talk to me about your experience of the Mandela uh, uh, Washington uh, Fellowship. Yeah, I'd love to say it would have been the Mail and Guardian top two hundred, but. I didn't think I was going to win, so I didn't even go to the awards. I mean, they invited me. I was like, ah, I'm, not going really? to I'm not going to fly to Joburg, but I'm not going to win. And I found out next day I won. And I did not even get a free subscription to the Mail and Guardian, which I'm super bummed about because it's like they generally do quite good news. And I'm like, oh. I refuse to pay for the news. I should have gone. I didn't even get a subscription. Let's call um, them tomorrow and make it happen before you go back to the UK. Yeah, we can. Remember me. Give me a free subscription. Um, the um, Mandela Washington Fellowship was oh. yeah, an amazing experience. It basically took um, 500 of the kind of, they call it best leaders, most sure. you know, kind of inspirational leaders from across Africa, um, yeah. and then placed them in either entrepreneurship, civic leadership, or um, nonprofits, yeah. um, um, and divided them up. And then it went to, so 500 from across Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, went to universities all across all across the states for yeah. um, basically um, a, a six weeks, so yeah. seven weeks. So the whole program was, was two months. And then, um, so I went to the University of um, Texas in Austin. So I found myself in, in Texas for, for seven weeks. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'm glad it was Austin because I think the rest of Texas I may have had more of a culture clash with, but apparently Austin's, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely more kind of California liberal leaning. Sure. So. Sure. Um, and then the last week we went to Washington D.C. and uh, um, this is when Obama was still um, in office, and Obama sure. spoke to the leaders. There was about twenty minutes of kind of open, and the press were there, and then they sent the press out, and it was a closed room, and anyone could ask any questions to him. Mm. Uh, and it was just the most incredible, incredible I time. And yeah. that, so I still haven't watched that hand. It's still. Um, <laughs> hey, please keep it. Please keep it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love this. Oh, oh, okay, Zandi says um, uh, Shane, and um, and and then of course Linda. Um, Shane, you are an incredible example of having a vision, passion, and following your dream to impact others through excellent storytelling. You are changing people and impacting them to action. That is so true. Who's to Linda? My, to my family members, I'm paying them to to say good things about me. <laughs> No, man, but but hey, you've just wasted money because everything she has said is true. You didn't even need to pay her for that. Yeah. Oh, so, uh. <laughs> okay. Now let's 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 transition a bit. Um, speaking about your family, and um, I mean, you know, the African proverb: it takes the village to 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 raise a child. There must have been, you know, people that have impacted and have made a contribution to, to, to who Shane is today. This award-winning uh, global change maker uh, must have also been changed and impacted by others. Do you want to take some time and, and reflect on, on those people and how did they impact you? Yeah. Um, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this earlier and saying, I. I can't, you know, some people can point to there was this one school teacher who sure. impacted me and changed my life because they believed in me. Or sure. I, I don't think I can, I can't necessarily do that. There's not one necessarily specific person who was um, the person who, who kind of changed my life. But I can sure. say this, <laughs> sorry, multiple people who have changed my life in different seasons for different times uh, sure. for different reasons. Sure. Um, and so it's a lot more kind of um, cock decomp or comp compartmentalized um then then just you know nailing sort of down to one piece and so i would say i, I mean we, we spoke about it earlier but i'd say like my family my parents um just kind of growing up in an environment which is like this your worldview needs to be bigger than just this you know um you know this just this, this little cup it needs to be here sure. um I remember um, one stage going to, um, I was in school and my parents were, were traveling, they're going to the States and um, we had just finished our third term holidays and gone back to school for like two days or something. And um, then my dad wanted to travel to the States, he was gonna take us out of school and would come back like at the start of the fourth term holiday. So basically I missed the whole last term of school. Um, and uh, so kind of, I mean, I wasn't there, but I remember my dad telling the story, went to the principal and said, hey, I want to take um, 
my my kids because me and my brother I think we were in the same school at the time out of school um, to do this trip and the principal said no you can't um, and so my dad said well let me rephrase it I'm not asking you I'm telling you I'm going to take them out. I'm going to take them out of school Either you give them the work they can do it or they're not doing the work um, sure. and I think it is kind of this idea learning this young that the for me, I always I've learned way better outside the classroom, meeting people, um, hearing their stories is way more fascinating than reading something in a textbook. Mm. Um, and so I think kind of the value of um, not only storytelling, which I learned from my parents, but the value of like um, kind of learning other people's stories, um, sure. and in 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 like kind of putting yourself in other people's cultures, other people's stories. Sure. Um, sure. You know, because and I think it did it has impacted me a lot because. Uh, being in being in, in in kind of South Africa, I'm you know the kind of I'm not I'm not that out I'm not the other I'm I'm the in you know I'm from a middle class wealthy family I'm a white guy I'm I like I'm I'm straight I went to uh, you know it, it, like a you know former model C school so nothing in my life have I ever been the outsider and I think sure. kind of traveling not I mean it doesn't give you at all the same experience but it makes you you can realize sometimes when you go into other cultures and go okay this is kind of i'm not the in person um sure. it, it doesn't feel the same as living in a culture where that's not the same not at all sure. and that's what, what i'm saying but it, it, it can give you an sure. insight to be like oh it even in a minute little way i don't like this feeling so sure. how do i be that person when i'm in my own you know, culture, my own society, my own circles, who brings people into the circles um, and, and makes my circle look diverse and different rather than just uh, look like me. So I think sure. that that's kind of a lot I learned. And then also probably growing up um, uh, also obviously from my parents, but then also them being in YWAM and, you know, doing, you know, DTS when I finished school. Um, and I think that kind of definitely kind of shaped the way I saw the world, you know, these, these amazing people from all around the world you're getting to meet and talk to and hear their stories, which is incredible. Um, so I think definitely, definitely why I am. And then um, I suppose there's different people throughout, but I suppose the kind of the one, which I mean, kind of bizarrely, because I don't even know, would, I suppose would be Marlon, would kind of be one of those kind of mentor figures. Um, oh, sure. And so there's, there's different people and his would be kind of showing you like, how do you kind of make a different, like a practical difference in mm -hmm. people's lives? Sure. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's kind of kind of been the village. And now, even as we grow, and and me and and Bianca have now moved, obviously, as we said, to the UK. But, and there, it'll be like, cool. How do we now? What's our village here? And sure. who do we learn from here? And how? Sure. You know, and, and and what do we take from here? And then, as we move from there, we don't know where the road's going to take us, but hopefully, end up somewhere else. We're like, cool. What is our village going to look like here? Um, sure. And and sure. who do we learn from? Sure. Yeah. It's amazing how, I mean, you've just mentioned um, uh, YMM and, and the, the DT, what's yes. the format? Yes, yes. Training school. Yes, the training school. Here's the amazing thing. Um, your, your, after I became friends with your parents, they introduced me to an incredible couple, the Bowers. And, um, and, and so I had the privilege of, of um, being invited to go, I think it was a week, week or two, um, at, um, and be one of the teachers there. I think I was on social change leadership. And, um, and it, it just shows you that the, the world can really be a small, a small place. And, um, and it's so beautiful when you get to breathe the same air with the people that have and share the same aspirations and values as you do. And, um, and that's what your home and and always represents for me. I would rather stay at your house than stay at a five uh, a star hotel. Let's just let's stay from my parents' house. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I, I mean, yeah. your parents' house. I mean, you're in the UK, man. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you come stay with me. But if you stay with me in the UK, I'm sure you'd rather go. I'd rather be staying in a. No, five -star. no, 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 no. no. I, I prefer to stay with your folks. Yeah. I, also, I'm older. I'm, I told you I'm turning 40 next year. I can't be around here, younger folks. And uh, okay, now now let's go to to um, to uh, look. I don't normally ask this, but I, I feel comfortable asking this to you in particular because you've kind of alluded to it and and implied it. How have you made sense? 
of of your white privilege and what it brings and uh, how important has it been i mean i i personally believe that uh, Privilege is 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 morally neutral. There's nothing wrong with being privileged, and um, and it gets even better when you share it. Because when you share it, then it stops becoming a privilege, and um, whatever that makes you, you know, privileged. But but how have you dealt with 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 the white privilege? I, 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 of course, there are many people that would even argue that yeah, I'm normal. We are all equal. But but you are very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you are very clear that there are doors that 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 are open to you because simply because of the color of your skin mm -hmm. and where you come from. And 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 talk to me about and reflect uh, with me on that, please, Shane. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, and this actually ties in quite uh, uh, nicely with, with kind of the previous thing. And I suppose one of the other areas which I say kind of had a big sort of impact on on my journey was. And we spoke about at the beginning was the warehouse and and yeah. all the justice conference in kind of sure. that thinking and how do we how do because I kind of felt this something uneasy in my spirit, but church wasn't speaking about it and I didn't have friends who were actively engaging in it. Um, uh, at least they were, but it wasn't popular conversation, you know. And so yeah. I think being involved in in this conference and the warehouse and those circles and those thinking kind of helped me unlock a little bit of like my my thinking towards these. So I definitely put them in kind of that that circle of, of the village, which has helped train my thinking. Um, definitely. But I think it's it is is it, it is important um, for for me to acknowledge that. And I'll say even specifically more important in the role that I hold, uh, being a filmmaker. And sure. some people think, well, as a as a white person, uh, there's certain stories you shouldn't tell. Hmm. I would say um, hmm. I, I wouldn't say there's any stories you can say to someone you shouldn't you can't tell that story, you know. Hmm. Or they oh, sorry, so people say you, you can't tell that story, and I wouldn't say hmm. to anyone you can't tell that story because I'd say well, then you're kind of blocking the, the kind of freedom of speech, right? Sure. But I would say are there certain stories I shouldn't tell, or hmm. are there stories that other people who have a lived experience are better at telling that story, and how do how do I sort of p partner with them? Sure. Um, sure. And so I think acknowledging that and not going, well, I'm good at what I do, so I can mm. tell any story in South Africa, no matter mm. whose story, I, sure. I will tell you. Um, sure. Because I think you start losing um, amazing voices, amazing yeah. insights, um, and, and it's, it's just a shame. So I think, for example, with, with um, you know, um, my, my, my latest film where we did, it was, it was on gender-based violence. Yeah, we're dying here. Yeah, yeah, hashtag we are dying here. And I'm sure yeah. when I mentioned people go, like, do we really need another film on gender-based violence made by a white male sure. or made by a, a, a male? Um, sure. And I think for me, this project was, was so special and close to my heart because um, it was originally a stage production directed and written by, you know, the amazing Sipokazi Jonas. And, like, yeah. then we worked with her into making it a film production. But... Sure. What I say to people is, when you watch it, it's an it's an incredible piece. But my role in that was taking my skills that I have into taking something on a page and making it look good on screen, and yeah. and all of that in partnership with Sipokazi. But they were Sipokazi's words; they were her, her lived experience; they were her poems. Mm -hmm. And so, it's kind of this coming together of saying, like, what is your experience, and how do I bring your experience and my privilege side by yeah. side, yeah. and how do they complement each other? Sure. Um, and I've, I've been struggling, like, how do you do that, especially as a storyteller, um, where it's, it is, I would say, probably impossible to take your mm. voice out. And if, um, and this was just an amazing experience of feeling like, what does that look like when, when you know, you come together with someone who is a great story, who wants to tell their mm. story. Um, and, well, I got the skills to help, but you yeah. tell your story, I'm just going to, to amplify your voice. Yeah. All the levels that I can to amplify it. Oh, yeah. um, and and so when I say it's amazing, I go, wow, it's weird he's saying his work's amazing. I'm saying Sipokazi's work is amazing. And I had the privilege to work with her to to sure. bring it out. Sure. Yeah, I think it is it's, it's it is something that I you know have to work with every day. And, and you yeah. know, what is my, my privilege? Look, I've been going into a shop 
and you know getting frustrated because the tail is slow or getting stuck in traffic and you know realizing oh, I'm in traffic are you mm. and then be like well, at least I have the privilege of driving a car you sure. know so there's so many things oh, which I'm a few. I'm when a few. you when you engage with it um you know on a helpful level it can be very helpful uh, sure. at, least, at least to me um, but yeah. I think to anyone who's genuine and actually wants to engage with it it changes the way they relate to the world it changes the way they relate and see other people which sure. can only be a good thing yeah no definitely definitely and um, and look <laughs> Valerie says um, I mean Spokas is is our mutual friend you and I and an incredible human being and, and here's the crazy thing okay you met her at the justice conference. Of course, I knew her way before then. We go to the same church, but she's absolutely an incredible poet, gifted with her words. And uh, Valerie, we will definitely be having Spokazi on the show. I promise you, we'll definitely be having her. And um, I'm going to let her know that you want her here. Yeah. Um, and she, uh, as I was but, talking to her just before, um, literally just before I came out, I was like, here's the link. And because we're chatting about another project that we're working on, not this yeah. one, another. Because yeah. now, like, um, you know, we're working on everything we can together. Um, sure. And she's actually busy, so she's not watching, but she's, she wanted to sure. be recorded so that she could watch it. Sure. And so she would be on the show soon. But she also sp speaks super highly of you. She's like, man, I can't make it. So. <laughs> She's an incredible human being, absolutely incredible human being. Uh, and then Jafta says, um, we need more of Shane's who celebrate diversity. And... Um, um, all right, Shane, we, we, we're going to go and touch other questions and comments uh, later. I don't know where time went. It's going so fast. Um, but hey, we are in Africa. Uh, we normally say they're in the West. They've got the clock. We've got the time. And so, but, <laughs> but of course, we, you know, we're pushing for that for, for the next 20 minutes or so. Now, let's, 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 um, let's transition into, I mean, for a 31-year-old, that has done the work that you have done. Sim the truth is, you, you look, you are a success. You are a success. And look, personally, I, I, I believe that success is a personal construct, mm -hmm. and um, and that and that success should not be so much defined, and it is not, and should not be defined so much by where one is but what one has had to overcome um, uh, 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 to be where they are. Now, let me say, let me tell you something as, as, as a black man. It is, it is difficult to overcome poverty and inequality and all the things that you are born into, uh, especially my generation back then, and even those that came after me. But I also take my hat off white people who have consistently and deliberately sought to overcome the trappings of racism, the trappings of, um, of privilege, people who have sought to discover the world outside of those limitations. And you are one of those, Shane. And, and for that, I really celebrate you. And I celebrate your parents as well for that, uh, to realize that there is a world outside those that look like us. There is a world outside those that speak like us. There is a world outside those that have grown up where we've grown up. And But to deliberately, because, because here's the thing, here's the thing. For me, to overcome the trappings of my childhood was a matter of survival. I needed to, I needed to go to school. I needed to get that tertiary education. I needed to make it, it's a matter of survival. But people who are born into privilege do not need that. They can survive without the external world. But for them to make themselves uncomfortable and seek to learn other people's cultures and worldviews, that is something to be admired. And, and, and I'm saying that to you and your family, of course, but to you, Shane, uh, in particular, I admire that about you. And, and, and for me, that makes you a tremendous success. Thank you. you um, I, yeah. No, well, before, so before I speak about the success thing, and I'd say that um, 
for me, it's always when everyone, any, anyone kind of praises me or my work, I'm always like, I feel awkward because, and I think it's not spoken about enough, especially in, in kind of creative circles, but I suppose in any high performing circles, and sure. I think it needs to be spoken about it more, and it's this idea of imposter syndrome. And I struggle with it big time. So I'm like, hey, eventually sure. I'm going to be found out. I've done this sure. last sure. piece, but now the strength, I've got to do a better piece. Or when you say, sure. oh, you've done all this work, I look at myself and go, yeah, but I know as a white privileged male, I've got so much more work to do. Wait till they find sure. out. Um, mm -hmm. And I think many high performing people, uh, I think statistically most high performing people struggle with this. Um, sure. I found it in, um, when I did the Mandela Washington Fellowship, um, Actually, the night before, I was doing I was doing my application. I forgot about it, and Bianca was like, "Are you applying to that thing?" And I was like, oh, "I should. I think it's just one question." It turns out there was a lot of questions. So I was sitting around the dining room table. I was like, "Mom, you can write this, and B, you write that essay, and I'll write this essay." And we're kind of, sure. um, sure. um, but the whole thing is like, I don't deserve to be here. And then you get there, and everyone says like, "I don't deserve to be here." And it's mm. the same thing, uh, with Bianca now at at, at Said. You like. I and mean, B was like, well, how did I get in? They made a mistake. The person was sleeping. Uh, I slipped through the cracks. And you were so intimidated. And then you go to start meeting the other people in, say, in the side business school. And they were like, or at, even at Oxford in general, they're like, I don't know how I got here. I'm mm. going to get found out. And I think mm. the, the mm. idea uh, is when people acknowledge it. Like, we don't deserve to be there. Um, in a sense, it was maybe luck, maybe timing. Uh, yeah. It was hard work. but also. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of so I always feel oh, because I'm like they praising me now, but just wait till they find out um, mm, about this, right. this, and this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think to to the success thing, I was talking the other day and saying, like, how will I measure a successful life? And I think success for me is is living a life that allows others to simply dream. And, wow. and for me, it's like when I because I was, I was kind of brainstorming, what does it mean? And then I came on that, I was like, that's it. Because I love that. I absolutely it, love that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I, and for me, when it clicked, I was like, that's that's success for me. Because, you know, if, if, if we take this analogy of, you know, a garden, you know, someone's not going to plant a garden to eat from that garden if they don't have hope that tomorrow's going to be better. Sure. Because the garden, there's time, you know. Someone's not going to paint a house that they don't own, mm, sure. you know. So if someone does not have hope that tomorrow is going to be better than today, um, if and if someone can't look at you and say, because of that person, I have hope that tomorrow is going to be better. Mm, mm. What, so for me, if I can do that um, amongst many other things, but I think um, kind of on an intellectual level, it can kind of all fit under this idea of dreaming. Sure, that if I sure. live a life that allows others to simply dream that their lives can be better, sure. Um, sure. I would say that's kind of been been success, uh, successful. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. I absolutely and 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 it when you embrace that mentality and and you start to care less about what people think and and say about you, but you start to care more about how you make them feel about themselves. Because yeah. it is that, yeah, yeah. Because it is that that really changes the world. How you make people feel about themselves. I absolutely love that. And um, thought of, uh, Mansfield, well done, Shane. Um, and then another chapter, beautiful definition of success. Who was that? Another family member. Thanks, Grant. Okay. All right. Um, beautiful. Me a lot of money. Shows. Sure, <laughs> like I said, you've just wasted that money, my friend. You've just wasted right. that money. Uh, back to the, you know, if we talk about success and we speak about success kind of versus significance, for me, then I'll say what, what defines significance? I'll say significance for me is that impact part. Sure. So I can be successful without having significance. I don't think sure. you're going to be significant without having success. And for me, sure. and that's why this whole idea of having impact on my work, impact on my life, impact on my relationships, that significance equals, you know, sure. impact. And, and that's sure. how kind of I would sure. sort of find those. Sure. Now, okay, let's transition again. Um, Africa. Now, let, let me just share an observation, and um, I, I didn't warn you about this. Okay. Many of my 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 white friends, many, um, a good number of them, 
they love being South African and, and, and they love uh, and, and um, you know, identifying with South Africa, uh, with, with South Africa. But some of them do not necessarily share the same affinity with the rest of the continent. Um, it's as if South Africa is outside of Africa. And, um, but this platform is, um, I, I mean, the, one of the missions of, 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 of the Real Village is to reconstruct and empower Africa. While we are a station in South Africa, but the outlook is pan-African because we, we, we realize that um, uh, South Africa's success is intricately linked and tied up to the entire, to the rest of the continent's success. Um, we can't be successful and uh, we can't have a thriving democracy uh, in an Africa that does not strive for the same. And so I'm going to be asking you not necessarily so much about South Africa, but about, about Africa. What is your dream Africa? How does it look like? Mm -hmm. you know, what is the Africa that you hope to, you, 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 your children and, and, and great children get to inherit? What is the Africa that you wish we would live in? How does it look like? And what do you think stands between us and that Africa being realized? I think if we look at Africa now, there's so many issues that we can obviously point and everyone knows. And, and so and a lot of them are systemic or massive issues. And so we don't want to tackle them. But I, I think, well, it was, it was, I think in Hamilton and Lin-Manuel Miranda kind of, sp they spoke about a legacy. What is a legacy? And it's planting seeds sure. in a garden you never get to see. Um, and I, mm. I could never do that justice because it's a great musical. Sure. But it, that, I think it's kind of having to have that mindset, as we spoke earlier about this kind of analogy of a garden, is what are the sure. things we want to change in Africa? And instead mm. of going too big, I can't make a difference. I can't change it in my lifetime. Be intentional about kind of putting things in place to, to start yeah. changing. Yeah. Um, I mean, from I mean, I've limited travel across Africa, but... You know, from you know, I mean, you know, it's to go from you know Ghana to Nigeria, which are relatively close, and it yeah. couldn't be more different. And then you come to Rwanda, couldn't be more different. So it's mm. so very, even this idea of what does Africa look like? I don't think I don't think we can say what Africa looks like because sure. I don't think Africa looks like one specific thing. I think sure. you know, Africa looks like fifty. 53, How many countries are there? Fifty four. Could be completely wrong. Yeah. 53, yes, 53 countries, 2,000 yeah. uh, 2, plus different languages. That's okay. kind of what Africa looks like. So how do we accept it and take it for what is it in all its diversity and all that glory? How do we um, start finding common ground between all of that and bring it to the table and say, this is the richness of Africa. Not sure. that we are uniform, but that we're different. Sure. Um, and, then, and then we can start getting into the nuts and bolts and saying, you know what are the things, and I think the things are um, obvious, but I think in most places. But a lot of it just, I would say, comes down to leadership. Sure. sure. In that um, we need leaders with kind of a, a new vision for what their country could be, uh, sure. for for what their kind of transborder relations could be. Uh, we need a vision for you know trans you know con continental travel. And when people sure. travel, especially you know, pr uh, you know, majority privileged people, they, they, where they're going, they're going to America, they're going to Europe. Mm. Um, mm. Like, why you got the, one of the most beautiful places sure. on the earth, the beautiful continent on the earth, like is that right here? Um, so I think, but I would say the big thing is leadership and getting the the right leaders in the right place at the right time. Um, sure. And and I think that's really tough. Um, because in a lot of countries, a lot of places, there's systems in place which don't allow necessarily the best leaders to sure. to rise up. Sure. Um, and then again, even speaking from my position of of privilege, well, what does the best leader look like? Mm. Uh, do they sure. speak my language? Do they have my kind of education? Um, I think it's going to be very kind of regional, um, but I think it definitely comes down to 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 needing kind of strong strong leaders. Sure. Sure. Thanks, Shane. And uh, oh, by the way, I've just googled it. Uh, 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 it's fifty-four. Fifty-four. Uh, yes, <laughs> you're right. I was wrong. So much for a pen Africanist. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know. Look, we will definitely be touching on. I mean, I mean, you touched the whole issue of of legacy. Let me ask you. 
how would you want to be remembered, Shane Fermutin? Hmm. I'm never sure how to pronounce your surname. I pronounce it this way when I speak with you and the other way when I speak with your dad. But yeah, I, I, pronounce it the way you speak with my dad because I'm not even sure how you pronounce my surname. Sure. Because I, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I really want to say it. <laughs> I'm still not good. Um, yeah, let's talk about your legacy. Yeah, uh, legacy. Um, yeah, I think I'd want to be remembered for the stories I told and how I told those stories. Um, I think the amazing thing, and it's an honor, is that being a storyteller, um, you know, in whatever form that is, you inherently are, in everything you're doing, you're leaving a legacy. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes is in my mind uh, when you're filming, you know, if you're doing another job, you know, you're a banker or a consultant or, what I mean, whatever job is out there, not knocking those jobs, but inherently most jobs are you doing something so that you can get money so that you can live, right? And then maybe, and you're leaving, you know, uh, maybe a financial legacy in terms of to your kids, but no one's ever going to go back and say, remember on that day mm. when he that 100,000 rand check or whatever. Mm. So mm. The very nature of being a storyteller, whether that's a, you know, novelist or a filmmaker or a podcaster, whatever is, this real dialogue that we're doing now, like sure. is going to be Monday the 16th of November, 2020 forever. Sure. Will be online. Um, sure. and, and that's kind of part of legacy. So even when I'm making films and get, filming a shot, I go, wow, that's a great shot. And then when I choose that in the edit and now my project's released, I'm like that shot, that shot selection, that acting, mm. that all of that is part of what I'm going to be, long after I'm gone, my films mm. will still be here. Mm. Um, sure. This dialogue will still be here. And uh, sure. I think it kind of means inherently in that everything you're doing, you're actually creating a, a legacy. Um, but it mm. also puts more pressure sometimes on everything you're doing because you're like, this is going to be around. So mm. I get sometimes nervous when I'm doing talks. I'm like, mm. what if I say the wrong thing? Or mm. I say something and I'm going to be remembered by that. And mm. uh, and it's not actually what I think or, or what I mean. Um, but that's part of now what your legacy sure. is. So I think I would, I would want to be told as a, as a, as a storyteller, an orator who told Africa stories um, in a way that Africa was proud of. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to quote you on that one. I love that. I absolutely, that just resonated with me. Uh, yeah. That just hit me uh, to tell African stories in a way that Africa was proud of. Mm. All right, Shane. Okay. Before I get all... Uh, what up? Uh, let's just quickly go through some message, uh, uh, messages that we have here. Um, okay, Valerie is asking again, what are you, I think you've answered that, but uh, you, you can look into it again. What are you working on nowadays, Shane? Nowadays, like, um, yeah. so um, there's that, the film, that film, uh, We Are Dying Here, uh, hashtag We Are Dying Here. Um, so it'll be, part of that is, is, uh, releasing that, doing the festival run, getting it distributed, getting it seen. So that's sure. um, just finished that. Um, and then kind of working on um, one or two small projects before the rest of the year. Sure. Um, the kind of, kind of main push at the moment is um, our production company, Optical, and basically finding stories, long form stories um, that drive impact. Um, sure. The impact is not second to the message. The message is not second to the impact. But they they both go hand in hand. We want to just tell great stories. So I think driving that, um, finding finding more clients, which is a difficult thing now because yeah. you know yeah. really spend money. Um, sure. But then also in January um, or January February, I may come back to South Africa. There's a a big uh, movie which an American director is coming down for, and um, our company's just and another company trilogy are just servicing that job. Mm -hmm. So basically. Sure. We're just, make sure everything's in place and ready for them when they get here, get the cast, sure. the crew. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the, the things I'm working on. Otherwise trying to work on my tan in the UK, but that's uh, not going to so well. <laughs> Good luck with that. Right. Um, yeah, and then this, then, is, uh, um, this is, sorry, yeah. I'll be to get to that. It's, it's the okay. nature of um, uh, our industry. It's like, you've done something and then the question, okay, what's next? And you, mm. you have an answer for that. Um, yeah. And sometimes I'm a I'm a bit slow with that, but it is 
it's it kind of just never stops. You do one thing, cool, what's next, what's next, what's next? Um, we also do have um, a, a feature, um, like uh, a TV series, uh, which we're hopefully, hoping to, to pitch to a bunch of um, networks soon. We had written it as a, um, as a kind of generic international TV series and we kind of just rewrote it to kind of look at uh, the class and kind of systems in, in Cape Town. But it, mm -hmm. it again, it follows similarly the idea of bypass in that this guy said, Legal organ clinic um, to give the working class money, but to save the rich, and so it looks at all sure. the ethics of that. Set in a, a context of Cape Town and everything that comes with that. Uh, so that's uh, we got the pilot script, and that's uh, a forty-five minute pilot. And then mm -hmm. we're in the process. If we if someone picks that up, then we'll write the entire series out. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, yeah. man. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, keep us posted. And then, of course, Tim Ngozi Matikas, virtual reality seems to be a future of filmmaking. How does VR change the face of the film industry? Um, yeah, I'd say I don't know. I think VR is going to be a tool. I think um, I don't think it's going to be the the future. I think that if it is going to be, the future, there's lots of kinks to work out because um, it's you can get motion sick and you can. There's lots of Kinks mm -hmm. to be sorted out. It's it's great, and I've watched some great VR movies and VR experiences. But it's a different experience. Um, it's a different way of telling, um, of of making movies. Because in a VR experience, you know, if I'm directing something, I'm like, I want the audience to focus on like that computer screen there. I want them to do this, and wherever I, you know, uh, sort of point the camera, that's where they're going to look. That's what they're going to process. When in VR, they could just turn their head. They can look everywhere. So I, you all of a sudden lose a lot of that control. Um, which is great for the audience, um, more difficult for the filmmaker. But um, I just think it's one tool, and I, I don't think it's going to overtake um, filmmaking as a whole. I think it'll be um, a fun space to play in, and I think it's going to get a lot bigger over the next few years. But same as, you know, 3D. Everyone was like, 3D is going to kill, you know, t uh, 2D films. And it hasn't. It's, it's great, and we enjoy 3D films, and obviously cinemas enjoy it, and so do studios because they can charge you more. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure it's the future, but I do enjoy it, um, sure. and I haven't sure. I haven't worked in a in a in a VR project yet, but hopefully sometime. Sure. Um, um, so, oh, okay, Zandi says success through Shane's lens looks great. Um, um, the impact and success narration very interesting, and um, and Lynette, that's brilliant, Shane. All right. Let's wrap it up. The last fives. We've um, your favorite. <laughs> yeah, you know that your favorite um, uh, 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 African destination. Let's start with that. Um, it will be a toss up. I'll say my would be between uh, Ghana and Rwanda. So I don't know. They they're different, but yeah, I love them both. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and, I go with two. I'm breaking the rules here. It, no, it's okay, man. They are meant to be broken sometimes. And uh, and and secondly, your favorite dish meal doesn't have to be African. I would say my favorite dish would be taco salad, which is very bizarre because I'm not a massive salad person, but uh, it's like kind of Mexican food, kind of. Mm. Not really how to describe it. It's, it's, it makes me feel healthy when I say it's taco salad because it's sure, sure. Like, whoa, it's very more of a salad. Yeah, mm. you know, and I, I was gonna say that uh, 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 Dai was probably smiling and, and and very proud that your favorite dish is a salad. And and then your favorite book, if there is such, and uh, one of those books that have impacted you. Um, yeah, I would say for me, um, any book, uh, sort of any biography, I love reading biographies. So I'd say yeah. maybe uh, Elon Musk's biography or Steve um, Jobs. Sure. Um, and the similarities in those were striking for me. Um, just like reading about people who succeed at that level. Uh, sure. It's just fascinating yeah. with all the flaws and successes. What does that look like? But um, I'm very excited for Barack Obama's new book. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Out today, I think. Or was it out on Friday? I've been reading good. reviews about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a physical a book reader, a Kindle reader, audiobook, or all of them? 
No, I, I if I'm going to read a book, I've got to be physical. Otherwise, I just sure. you know, get distracted with all the other shiny things that you can do on the iPad or sure. Sure. computer screen. I'm like, ooh, a pop up. What's that? And then I know, I know. And then you get the yeah, idea. Yeah. I know. But I've been enjoying audio books. I, I really have. I, I really yeah. have. And um, no, I, especially, I, especially biographies. Yeah. Yeah. No, the the problem. I think I love. I also love audio books. But you know, I'll be driving and something would happen in this. Um, you know, the audiobook can be like, oh, that's amazing. But I'm driving, I get home, I'm yeah. like, this is an amazing thing this guy said. What was it? Yeah, oh, because he couldn't just speak it. Yeah, I know. Because I'm not complete, because my mind's in two places. Then I'm oh, like, oh. it was a thing he said. And um, hmm, I can't, and I'm like, if I can't remember an hour later, it's probably going in this year out that way. Oh. Um, but I feel like I like to do it. I like to feel smart when I'm driving and I listen to audiobooks. <laughs> I know what you mean. You know what I enjoy them about, and and is that you can read and then you can return, and then what they do for me, they inform the kind of books I should permanently invest on. Yeah. So 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 I would just you know listen listen like ah oh, I think I think I can buy the physical book, and uh, even better maybe a hard copy. And uh, so so yeah so for me they 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 go together. But I really really do enjoy audio books at the moment. Okay, but this is not about me. It's about Shane. Um, and you look. I don't normally ask this question, but you are in that space. Two favorite movies of all time. Sure. <laughs> I figured. Of all time. All right. Okay. Just, 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 um, just you know, movies that just come to mind. I, I mean, I, I know a couple of movies that just do it for me. A Beautiful Mind, incredible movie, um, Men of Honor. Yeah. But, but hey. Beautiful Mind. Right? I mean, if you're going right back, I mean, under lockdown, I can't, we, uh, me and B kind of did a reboot of all the old classics. Um, Sure. I'd say maybe Casablanca is one of the great, probably one of the, ah, you know, sure, sure. Um, sure. There's Marilyn, Mon Marilyn Monroe one, Too Hot to Handle. Um, mm -hmm. The name sounds very really risque, but it's not at all. It's really <laughs> cool. um, sure. Coming closer, I would maybe say, um, you know, um, 1917, I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched I didn't yeah. You haven't seen it, no. Um, mm. Yeah, this, I always hate getting, getting put on the spot. There's just so many. Sure. Uh, I didn't warn you about it, but, but I, I, like I said, I have not asked this question to anyone before, yeah. but since you are in the space, I just thought, let me just ask you that. And um, and, and, and and your favorite song? My favorite song? I would yeah. say at the moment, I kind of go through things. My favorite kind of album would be the Hamilton soundtrack. Um, it's uh -huh. just on repeat in our house we just listen to the hamilton soundtrack like over and oh, over sure. uh, i love the hamilton soundtrack or really any musical theater soundtrack um sure. which is like so it's yeah, you know you can relive the experience of being in the theater over and over and over again mm -hmm. without, mm -hmm. uh, you know without not actually being in the theater so we uh yeah me and b just love musical theater so any musical theater soundtrack is sure. it's right up our alley but right now it's hamilton and I think we've worn that, you know, that iTunes sure. playlist out. Sure, sure. Yeah. And look who's just joined us. Okay, look, of course, she's watching. We knew that she is. Hello, B. Uh, only B is. Only B's taco salad. Yeah, sound like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, 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 and of course, Anila Jafta um, co commenting on my favorite movie, of all, one of my favorite movies of all time, Beautiful Mind. It's a classic, indeed. And um, your favorite quote? My favorite quote, I would maybe say it's uh, the long one, the uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, it's not the critic who counts. Because um, sure. literally mm. in our history, we have sure. critics who literally just sure. criticize. Yeah, um, sure. And, you, and then you have people who aren't critics, but they just like, everyone's an expert, you know, sure. um, films. Um, and so everyone kind of wants to give their opinion and tell you what they like and don't like. Um, and it can be disheartening sometimes. So I think... Um, you know, it's 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 not the critic who counts is is probably um, my favorite kind of quote. I I absolutely understand. And hey, Shane, we've come to the end of this conversation. And once again, thank you so much for taking the time to to honor us with your presence. Number one and um, number two, I meant what I said earlier on about your 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 posture towards going out of your comfort zone. And in trying to make this world a better place, and um, and I can tell you that those that know you 
have been enriched by the experience and that this world in Africa is a better place because you are here. I'm so proud to know you, man. All the best. May God bless all your endeavors and all the best to be um, with the MBA. And uh, we can't wait to have you guys back. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor to, uh, to be on your show. Really appreciate it. Um, and I must say, this show has made me poorer because I've had to pay so many people to say good things. So thanks <laughs> for having me and I was made poorer by being on the show. So. Yeah. No, thanks, man. I really appreciate you having, here, uh, having you here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I hope and I pray that you you enjoyed this conversation. I know that I was I was quite challenged. I remember when he says that I want to tell African stories in a way that Africa will be proud. That that just resonated with me. And um, we wish you all the best, all the best for this week. And we will see you next week. We have another young continent change maker, uh, Uzanele Hachwayo. Incredible. Go Google her. Strangely enough, she works for Google and. Uh, and, um, and she does incredible work, a marathon runner as well. And um, you'll definitely enjoy, you'll definitely enjoy this. Now, I got to bring you back, Shane. I've got to bring you back while we read this one uh, from Craig Stewart. Craig, incredible. that's cool. right back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just had to bring you back. You were supposed to have gone. Uh, thanks, Craig. Uh, you're an incredible guy. And uh, you actually made it possible for me and Shane to meet through that incredible idea of the Justice Conference. And um, guys, all the best. We'll see you next week. And uh, in the words of that great African, Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe, remember Africa, may God bless you.